Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I recently acquired this solid core door. This has about an eighth inch thick maple hardwood surround all the way around. And the inside is some particle board. This thing is very heavy, it is very solid, and it is very flat and true. So I'm gonna use this to replace my old workbench top. The old top was only three quarters of an inch thick, had a lot of give to it, a lot of paint spilled on it over the years. It is just time for a new, more solid workbench. So I jumped at the opportunity to grab this thing right here. So I'm gonna put this on the CNC, I'm gonna carve my logo into here. And then on this end, I actually have a Craig uh, quick release work clamp that actually holds your material down to your work surface. And then when you don't need it or you don't want it, you can actually just take the clamp portion off, locks onto the plate there with a little keyhole. And then that plate stays in there. It's nice and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. And you flush that up at the top of your workbench so that we can slide material around. You're not going to catch any of the edges. Once all that's done, I'm going to cap this off with some 1x3 maple and then just trim it the thickness and I will have a brand new workbench top. Very excited about this. This has been much needed. I've been talking about wanting a new workbench top for a long time. So over here at the CNC, I am ready to stick the door on here, but that is going to pose two main problems. The first problem is that thing is heavy. So I'm going to have to recruit some help, get it on here and get it stable while I clamp it down. And the second problem, probably the biggest problem, is I have a back to this enclosure. So if memory serves me right, and it probably doesn't, my wife says I have CRS, can't remember. I think I put 90 degree corner brackets in all four of the corners back there. I'm going to climb in there. I'm going to peel back this foam uh, sound barrier. It's just basically a, a sound deadening material. And I'm going to make sure that I have those back there. And if I do, I'm going to pop those off, take the back off. I will get the door over to here and then I will bring you guys back. Okay, so there are those 90 degree corner brackets I was talking about. So memory did serve me correct. So there will be one of those in each of the four corners and then there's the one down in the five hole. So I'll just pop those off and bring you guys right back. All right, there she is all clamped up and ready to go. Got the back of the CNC off and open. I've got a couple of clamps here in the front and then I've got a couple of clamps here in the back and then I got some weight. This thing probably weighs about 40 pounds. Got some weight on there. Everything seems solid. Everything looks pretty good. I have a good feeling about this. I marked my center. Got everything ready to go. I'm going to load up the program and get to cutting. So here is the logo. It turned out awesome. Using the CNC with basically a pass through by taking off the back allowed me to have this hanging out the back and the front fully supported. And then I just used a quarter inch end mill to carve this logo in here. I'm going to hit this with some penetrating epoxy now. That way this particle board won't be able to suck up the actual colored epoxy that I'm going to fill this in with. So I'm going to hit this real quick with some of that. And then over here, this is the Craig plate. This plate just sits here and it's flush with the surface. 
That way I can still use this workbench as a flat surface. And then when I want to clamp something, you just slide that clamp in there like that. Clamp it down, work on it, do what you need to do. And then when you pull that out, now you still have a functional workbench. So I'm going to hit the logo with some penetrating epoxy. And then once that fully cures and dries, I will be able to add my colored epoxy to that. It has been 18 long days since I've carved this and I've been waiting for the Michigan weather to cooperate. Hell, it's been so long, I've actually built pretty much the entire workbench while I've been waiting. I absolutely love the way the front of this bench came out so far. I took a piece of maple and I capped off the door just to add a little bit of protection. And then I ran a 45 degree chamfer along there just to add little protection for my delicate hands. My favorite thing about this bench is the first order retrievability. My old bench only had one drawer on the end. And as you can see now, I've got, I've got four. I've got so much more now. And I have all these products now at my fingertips whenever I need them, whenever I want them. I have some overflow uh, stock down here. That is some more of the pallet wood uh, runners there. I actually love the way those look as they are rough and, and vintage and used. So I'm going to leave those just the way they are. This is wide open as you can see that. I don't know if I'm going to end up changing that. I might add a couple shelves in here just to increase the storage capacity of that. I don't know. And on this one I actually put in an overhang all the way around. So that way, when I need to clamp something to this surface, I will be able to easily get a clamp down here on the bottom and clamp it to this top. My old bench did not have any of that. So the way my old bench was, these drawers faces actually sit. It was butting up against the front of my bench. And I was getting all kinds of glue and paint and run down all over these. So that's going to protect all these. And then also give me even more clamping ability along with the Craig jig. The weather this time of year is like a roller coaster. You got highs in the 70s and lows in the 30s. Not great weather for pouring epoxy. One thing that I do have on my side is this is only a quarter of an inch thick. I don't think it'll take that long to, to fully cure and dry. I have a little bit of time here uh, I think it's like the next 36 hours. It's not going to dip below 55. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this. And I am going to hope that it will cure. I'm sure it will. Just hopefully not that long. Uh, there's, you know, minor particulates in the air out here. So I don't want too much of that to settle inside my epoxy. I am going to use a dark red, a burgundy. So any of the fine dust, I don't think will make that big of a difference. If this were clear, I would be a lot more worried, but I'm going to level this table out and then I will go ahead and mix up my epoxy and pour. Grabbed a two foot level. I'm going to check this logo front to back and left to right. See what the bubble says. Bubble says great front to back. That is absolutely perfect. It's awesome. It's better to be lucky than good, I guess. And we'll check her left to right. That is also pretty darn close. I think that's good enough to go. So when I pour the epoxy in here, it should stay pretty much right in the letters, right where I want it to go. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and pour.
Now that this is all poured, we play my least favorite game of all time, the waiting game. So I waited basically 30 hours for this epoxy to fully cure, and it did. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. When I filled this, I got pretty lucky. I used the surface tension technique to where you pour just enough to where it kind of raises up, but it doesn't quite spill over yet because of that surface tension. And it worked out great because this did shrink just a small amount as it cured. So it ended up being basically perfectly flat and perfectly smooth on this. So because I'm a nice guy, I saved you the boring parts of me sanding this through all the grits. But I did get a really nice set from Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description. But it comes with all kinds of pads here. And these just go from 60 grit, 400 grit, 800, 2500, 4000. I went back there a 7000 and then you got 10000. And it comes with its very own sander here if you want to put a little elbow grease into this and sand it like that. I chose not to. I used the random orbital sander. I got this thing sanded up to 4000 grit. I think that is plenty smooth, especially for a workbench. I've got some water-based polyurethane. I'm going to just roll this on. I'll probably put two or three coats of this. I like this because it's very easy to fix and touch up. If something happens to this and I got to sand a part out and then I can just easily roll this right back on. It'll smooth itself out. It will basically adhere to itself. Leave me with one coat. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up running some clear coat on this. Let me give you a quick shot of this. Oh man, doesn't that look awesome? No, no it does not. Because this polyurethane goes on white, but it will end up drying clear. So I have all the confidence in the world that this will turn out nice. So now we just gotta give it a little bit of time. I'll give you guys a quick shot of what are in all these drawers. This is just a sanding slash gluing drawer. I got all my wheels in here, all my different glues, my painter's tape, some popsicle sticks to do some clean out, silicone brush there. These are all my hand tools. This thing is in general disarray right now. I just wanted to get everything in here that I wanted to be in this drawer. Once I do have everything in here that I think I'm going to need and think that I'm going to want on a daily basis. I will create a much better spot for this. I might get some Kaizen foam and actually carve something into here. Or I might just use the CNC. I don't know. But once I figure out where everything's going to live, I will make this much nicer. I never had any of this stuff close to me while I had the old bench. Got a nice sander here, a Dremel oscillating tool back there. And then I've got all the attachments. I put some dados in these drawers, so now all I have to do is get some material and just span that, and that'll help keep those in better order. And then the thing I think that I am the most happiest about is that I will have my trim router right here, right on hand. I have a really dirty router table back there. You can just see, there it is, the 45 degree chamfer bit right there. So I've got some of my half inch bits here. I don't really change those out all that often. So that's why I don't mind having it here. And then I've got all my quarter inch shank here for the trim router. I think having this setup just like this is going to be absolutely beneficial to my workflow. We as makers, we're always changing, whether it be the projects we're making or the products we're trying to kick out at a certain time. And our workflow changes based on those products. My old bench kind of had me pigeonholed into a certain pattern. And I only had certain tools near me close on hand. And that's why I had to make this new bench. I have all kinds of first order retrievability 
Adam Savage loves that phrase right there. Going on with this bench, that once I get into my workflow, I won't get kicked out for any reason. I can't stand being in here. I've carved out the time. I've got a project in mind, and I've got a time frame. And I come out here, and I can't find something. Something's buried under something else. I have to walk over there to grab something and walk back. I, I don't like any of that. It throws me off, it throws off my rhythm, and it slows me down. So this bench here, having everything first order retrievability as close as possible to me is going to help tremendously. We always adapt. We always evolve. Our workshops reflect that. If you guys enjoyed this video and you got something from it, please hit that thumbs up. That will help spread this to the rest of the community. And hopefully that can open up some dialogue between all of us. You guys may have seen me doing something with this bench that you thought was foolish or dumb or something maybe uh, you learned in your ventures there that you can share with me and vice versa. Maybe somebody will stumble across this video and this will be the video just to give them that little bit of inspiration to change their workflow and to change their workbench. And that's what I hope to do out here. I hope to get some communication, some dialogue between you, the community, and myself. I'm always learning. I'm always trying new things, and I'm sure you are too, which is why you're watching this video. So again, if you liked it, please hit that thumbs up. That will help this share, open up the dialogue. And until next time, take it easy.